I'm going to show you how to get started with Firebase hosting and how to set it up with GitHub Actions so you can generate a preview channel for every single pull request. Firebase hosting allows you to deploy static websites and server code to a blazing fast global infrastructure. All you need is a computer with Node.js and Java downloaded, but if you don't have those, don't worry, just check the links in the description. But for now, let's dive in. Here in my editor, I have a very simple folder structure for my simple website, which is made with Next.js. If you're not familiar with Next.js, it's a tool for building sites with React. Now I'm going to take this site and deploy it to Firebase hosting. On the command line, I'm going to install the Firebase CLI. Now, you might see a lot of people out there install it globally uh, with the dash G flag like this. And this is fine depending on your situation and setup, but I'm going to do it locally which means NPM will download the CLI within the node modules folder, and I can use it by tapping into nodemodules.bin slash Firebase. This is more verbose, but you will avoid any pseudo permission issues. Once it's downloaded, the first thing you need to do is log in with your Firebase account using Firebase login. This will take you out to the browser to log in, and once you're done, you'll come back to the terminal. Quick tip though, if you're managing multiple accounts, check out Firebase login colon add and provide an email to add another account and also Firebase login colon use with that email to switch between accounts. Now run nodemodules.bin firebase init hosting. This is going to take us through a wizard and ask us a few questions. First, you need a project. You can create one here in the terminal, or you can go out to the Firebase console. I have one already, so I'm just going to type it in. Now it's going to ask for your public directory. The files inside the public directory is what Firebase hosting deploys as your site. In this case, Next.js will build my site and export it to a folder named out. Now you get to decide whether you're configuring it as a single page app. So if you're building a spa with Angular, React, or Vue or something like that, you want to say yes. But since this is a static generated site, I'm going to say no. Now for this step for setting up automatic builds and deploys with GitHub, I'm going to say no because we're going to set that up in just a minute. And just like that, our initial configuration is complete. Before I deploy the site, I want to be able to set it up to serve locally. And I can do that with the Firebase Emulator Suite, which allows you to run several different Firebase services locally or in CI CD environments. Run nodemodules.bin Firebase init emulators. Right now, we're just going to select hosting. And I'll use port 5033 because I like to avoid common port numbers. And I'll use the defaults for the rest. Now, a lot of modern website tooling like Next.js requires a build step to take from something like JSX and turn that into HTML and CSS. If you go into package.json, you can see that there is an NPM script called build, which will run Next.js's build command and then its export to generate it as a static site. I'm going to run this before I serve the site locally and deploy. Now to run locally, run Firebase Emulator Start and open your browser up to the port. And just like that, we have our site running locally. So I feel good about it. It's time to deploy. Run nomodules.bin Firebase Deploy. And as a side note, you can provide a flag of dash dash only hosting to make sure you deploy only for Firebase hosting because the Firebase CLI can deploy a lot of other things as well, uh, such as cloud functions and security rules. Once the deployment is successful, you can access the site at your projectid.web.app. And just like that, we have our site running in production with an SSL cert. So let's take a second and dive into the details. How does Firebase Hosting know what project to deploy to? And what if you wanted to tailor your server configuration to do custom things like add headers or set up redirects? Well, all of that is managed in two files, Firebase RC and Firebase.json. For the most part, Firebase RC is managed with the Firebase CLI, so don't worry too much about it. Just know that it contains the projects that your site can deploy to. Now, Firebase.json contains server configuration capabilities that you should know. You can set custom redirects, so when a request comes in at one source, you redirect it to a new destination. And you can set the type, which is an HTTP 301 or a 302, so either temporary or permanent. And this is really helpful if you need to redirect a user to content that's located on a new path. You can add custom headers for one or multiple paths. Let's say you were hosting API data from a JSON endpoint. If you want to set the data to allow requests from any origin 
you can set the access control allow origin header to star. This is lovingly known as cross origin resource sharing or cores. Now I'm gonna move on to one of my favorite features, preview channels. It's great that we can deploy this site, but it's really important to have a place where we can stage new changes before going to production. So Firebase Hosting has a feature called Preview Channels where you can deploy a version of your site to a generated short-lived URL. And Preview Channels work really great in a GitHub workflow. You can set up a GitHub action that will deploy a preview channel for every single pull request. And the Firebase CLI will generate the entire workflow for you. Before I get into the GitHub action workflow, I want to show you how you can manually deploy to a preview channel. Run on the command line, no modules.bin, Firebase hosting, colon channel, colon deploy, and provide an ID. You can also provide a flag to customize how long the preview channel will live for with dash dash expires. This is going to deploy everything in my public folder, which is named out to a generated URL that will live for two days. You can see right here that we have what the ID was in my case stage, and then a generated set of characters and numbers. And let's open this in the browser. So this is the same site as we had before, but it now lives at its own generated short-lived URL. If you want to delete the preview channel before it expires, you can list all of your active preview channels with hosting colon channel colon list. And this will tell you all of the channel IDs, latest release times, their URL, and their expire time. You can see that a live channel never expires. To delete the channel, run hosting colon channel colon delete with the channel ID. So in this case, I'll run it with stage and make sure you confirm yes to delete. All right, now that you know the basics of preview channel commands, let's set up preview channels with GitHub Actions. The first thing you're going to need is a repository in GitHub. Right here, I just have a brand new repository I created and I'm going to need to set it up with my current project. So I'm going to add the remote and set my main branch so I can push it to GitHub. So here in the terminal, I'm just gonna paste in that command from GitHub and I'm also going to set up my main branch. The goal is, is that I want to be able to push a pull request per branch. So in this case, next will get pushed up to GitHub compared against main. And every time that happens, it will generate a preview channel per pull request. So first I need to check out main and push up my current changes to GitHub. So here in GitHub, I have my main branch pushed up with just my basic website files, but none of my Firebase hosting configuration. I'm going to add that via a pull request by pushing a new branch up to GitHub and that will kick off a GitHub action that will generate a preview channel. So here in the terminal, I'm going to check out my next branch, which will be the basis of the pull request. And then I'm going to see the modified files by running git status. And we can see that my firebase.json and my RC have not been added. So I'll run git add and a commit message. To set up preview channels with GitHub Actions, run Firebase init hosting colon GitHub. Just like before, this is going to open up a wizard. It first will log you in with GitHub. That will require you to go out to a URL and then come back. And then you provide the GitHub repository that you want to set up the workflow for. This follows a user slash repository name format. Behind the scenes, this is going to go out, download a service account, and upload it to GitHub's secret store, and so GitHub Actions can deploy on your behalf. Now, this is a very important bit. It's going to ask me if it wants to run a build script on the workflow. And for me, that answer is yes. Just like I showed before in package.json, I have a build command that runs Nexus build and Nexus export in order to generate my static site. So every single time I have a GitHub action that runs, I want it to run this build command before deploying. So I'm gonna mark yes. At this point, we're gonna provide what is the build script. The default is to run npm ci and then npm run build. npm ci is very similar to running npm install, but it is optimized for continuous integration environments such as GitHub Actions. And then after it runs npm ci, it's going to run my build command and that will generate out my site. This works for my workflow, but make sure to check your own so it works for yours. The next question asks if you want to set up a deployment to the live channel when a PR is merged. And this is saying I've accepted the PR and I want to deploy to my live channel, which in most cases is the production site. I'm going to say yes. 
And lastly, it's going to ask me, what is the name of the GitHub branch associated with your live channel? For most cases, this is going to be the main branch because main is the source of truth for most GitHub repositories and your production or live channel will be associated with that. This is going to create a .github folder with two workflow YAML files in it, one for when a merge happens to the main branch and one on a pull request. You don't have to edit any of these. These are all generated by us. All you need to do at this point is just check them in. Over in the command line, I'm gonna run git status to see our modified folders and only .github. So I'm gonna add that and run a commit message. And then I'm going to push this branch up to GitHub by supplying the dash u for upstream, the origin, and then the name of the branch. Over in GitHub, it's gonna let us know that we have a new branch in which we can create a pull request off of. So I'm gonna give that a name and then click the create pull request button. At this point, it's going to start running checks, which sometimes take just a second to show up. And it's going to start with this yellow circle, letting you know that the checks haven't been completed yet. But if you want to see what's going on, you can click this details link and it will take you over to the GitHub action section where you can watch the action run. It's going to run through all these steps. And once it's done, it will deploy it to the preview channel. And we can see that by going back to the pull request. And we have a comment from the GitHub actions bot with our generated URL. If you go to that link, you'll just see that it's the same site we were running in production and the same site we're running locally. But now it's just running on the generated preview channel. And by default, it will expire in seven days. Now back in GitHub, I'm going to merge this pull request. And once that's done, I can delete the branch, but go back to the main page for the repo. And if we look up here, we can see there's this little yellow dot. And that means that the merge action is running. So we merge the pull request into main, and that's going to deploy out to our live channel. And just like before, we can check out all the steps as it runs. Once it's done, it's going to be available on the live channel, which again is your project ID dot web dot app. So that's how you get started with Firebase hosting. And stay tuned because I'm going to be covering a full beginner to advanced course on Firebase hosting soon that covers advanced Firebase.json configurations, setting up JavaScript framework builds, and also doing server backends with Cloud Functions and Cloud Run. Leave a comment if you have any questions and let us know what tools or frameworks that you're using with Firebase hosting. So that's all for today and I will see you next time.